Hi guys, welcome once again to another episode of Tech the Things. Now today in the program, I'll be heading to Pickleball Cayman. Now I'll be taking my journey from Ground Zero, which is the Owen Roberts International Airport. And my journey will take me uh, from to Darcy Drive and on Smith Road. Now if you're new to the channel, I do implore you to subscribe. And if you want the latest videos, click the notification bell. Now, as you see me traveling there, when I reach, I will be speaking to the manager, Mr. Stephen Thompson. I will also be playing a game. I'll, I'll, it's, the sport is new to me, so I'll be trying to play a game with one of the instructors there, uh, Mr. Paul Manning, and I'll be just showing you guys around. So my journey here, this is the Owen Roberts International, the Owen Roberts Drive. And here we find the, to the right is the, the Cayman, Cayman Airways building. To the left is the Customs and Border Patrol headquarters. So from the Owen Roberts International Airport to Pickleball, it's about a five minutes drive depend well if the traffic is is smooth it's five minutes maximum now if it if the traffic is heavy then you have to add some some time to it and pickleball is fairly well it's new to me it's almost like tennis or table tennis but when i'm there when i reach there i'll be you will be the sport will be explained a little to you by uh, Mr. Stephen, and you will see me showing clippings of of games played while I speak to him. So to the left here is the the airport, uh, where the runway of the airport. that that driver did not obey the rules of the road he should have stopped and let me pass but nevertheless no accident was caused so I'm all good to go and the roundabout says you're supposed to ensure anything to your right has the right away so that's uh FYI there so here I'm gonna turn in and this is pickleball Cayman and just let you know that it is being it's still under construction so you will see what it looks like now and when it's completed you can look back at this video and say oh this is what it looks like before it was in full operational mode so I'm out now and I'm walking to the area you see there's a handicap parking so ensure that persons with disability always have parking spot you can hear the beating of the balls in the background and the, the area to the left is where people go and play so I'm just walking around to the right of the screen is where the restaurant will be built it is just being renovated now it should be finished in about a week's time from the making of this video so i came i came at a time when when it was 
just about finished and I wanted to see it before it was fully open. So to the left of the screen there you'll find areas that the kids can go and play who are not interested in the, in the game. There's uh, artificial grass here. That's the equipment office where I'm heading to. And so I'm just walking around to let you see what it looks like. Very, very pretty. There's some slides there. And you can hear some noise in the background. Some mechanical work, some work being done to ensure that the, the project is done on time. As you see here in front of me is a breadfruit tree, which is loved by people in the Cayman Islands dearly. It also seems like a coconut, not a coconut, a mango tree there. And that's the restaurant. As I say, it's not completely finished, but persons are working hard to ensure it's completed on time. There's a banana tree pronouncing itself there on top and lots of flowers and plants. Straight ahead will be a cricket net, a net bowling and batting net, also a lawn tennis area. But this will be explained at the ending of the video by Mr. Stephen Thompson. So this is the area where people will um, go to get inside of the nets and there's a lot of there are a lot of nets here but as you see rain fell the night before so they're doing some work to ensure the the water is taken out because it can't you can't play on the surface when it's wet speaking to one of the employees who's a good friend of mine <laughs> so they use various things to get off the water so you get your first look at a, at a, a game being played some this is a doubles match You have to have some good risk take, uh, movements in your hand to get the ball over the net and land inside. Okay. And that's Paul. He's one of the employees and he's one of the instructors as well. And he's the one that I'll be playing a game with. He's going to show me how it play and also Give me a game, but knowing Paul is is the per type of person who <laughs> very competitive, and I'm a quick learner, so I can just imagine what the score will be when both of us play. So here you can see is getting off the water using that tall thing. Try to get it off as quickly as possible so that they can get some games. So this is Paul showing me and this is the best example of what you call a crash course because he just give me a few instructions and then we are on. So it's just a game of, it's just like tennis or table tennis. 
I'm not really any teacher on it. So I, what I've learned is that you try to stay on one side and hit the ball on the opposite side. As you see, Paul to the lower end of the screen and me at the high end once it's served. So I lost that, that serve there. That's not my serve, I lost that point. So the server, if he, if he win, he win a point. If the person who is serving lost, he, he just lost his serve, but not a point. And once you win a point, you change your point of serve there. So that's the score that Paul is, is telling me about. So he won that point again and he switches his point of serve now. So he was on he was on the opposite side, now he changes. And as you say, 2-0 there. It's three now. So he's going on the opposite side. So I'm just giving you a count, a scoring thing. He hits there. And once you are serving, you have to serve over the net and on the opposite side of the line so the, the problem I'm having is that I'm a player I play cricket so and that's why I'm trying to play more cricket shot rather than uh, a tennis or a table tennis shot and and I'm new to it so I'm still learning And I'm being reminded this score every time I lose. So, so Paul hit that out, so he lost his serve. It's my serve now. So I won that point. So it's, I think, 5 1. But the server counts his score first, and that's why I said 1 5, because I was a server. So I lost my serve there and it's back to Paul now. Still the score is still the same, 5-1. Five, one. Five, one. And it counts 5 because Paul is the, the server. Uh, so that I did a uh, was proud of myself there for making that big shot. So it's 1-5 now. Oh. I lost that serve. I realized from early that Paul's weakness is the ball that is turning away from him. And that's why I was trying to serve up something with a spin away from him. Now this is a game that I played later on in the day. Because I went home and did some research and, and some exercising on my technique. and. I was trying to see if I can beat somebody or take out my aggression on someone else, which is this gentleman here who is uh, not as good as or not as skillful as Paul. So, and I realized by playing also is that the, my backhand is very weak, so. And that's from watching the video when I was editing. I realized my backhand is weak, so I use two hands when I'm playing with my backhand. Now, this gentleman is a table tennis player, so he's, he's, he found out he's very good. His technique is a little bit based on what I'm seeing unorthodox, Orthodox, but he is very good. So... From early, I see that I have a chance. However, my my knees, I was very weak because I was playing a lot earlier in the day, especially with Paul. So, and I see this gentleman, also the backspin for him is bad. 
and that's a back on it shot where I realize I am not good at it so that I hit the ball out too much as if I'm playing cricket. See, there you go. So it's 3 0 there. In that era now, it, I, I allow the ball to bounce and when it bounces, it, it just passes me. So. <laughs> From my assessment of playing, I realize I don't have much of a swing and I like to have some good swings. And that's what I was trying to do. Oh, I don't know the hell I missed that one. The back spin. I see the back spin. Right, the spin that went towards him, to in towards him. I found out it was his problem. <laughs> no, when you when you get a chance like that to hit it and you didn't hit it well, then you know it don't go down well with you. So that's what that's what got the better of me there. So by the, by now I'm I'm gaining some confidence over. The legs was 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 going. My I was so tired, but I was gaining some confidence because some shots that I was playing, I realized that it was making some good connections, and I was rallying. However, this gentleman had some experience, so he was using it much on me. Cause I got some instructions from Paul that you know I need to stay close to the net, so that I can cut off the an angle from the the person there my back shot went again my backhand i don't know where i got back shot from the backhand went i'm very weak at it that's that no i wanted to hit i should have hit it on the full and i was trying to so hard to get it on the bounce and as I see the score is six two. No, I just Yeah, that's all you should have done. So, 
Okay, 10 2. So, as you see, the score is 10 2. So, based on the score, you realize that the gentleman is far superior to me. But I wanted to finish in style, so I gave him some work to do, which I know he couldn't manage. And that's the one that got the wind out of me. I was looking at having a serious comeback in the game because the gentleman was making some errors. However, my I was so tired, so I know that's a far, far cry, and the sign was on the wall for me. That's a back on there. <laughs> and that's that's the game set and match for me so it's about time to line up my interview now so I'll leave here and go to find Steven so I'm here with Steven Thompson the manager of Pickleball Team Magic how are you doing, Stephen? Good, good. Right. Nice to see you. Yes, sir. Right, so, tell us about pickleball. Yeah, so we're a, we're a 12 court facility um, with dedicated pickleball courts. Um, we've we've covered them in shade so we can have some play during the daytime. It's a it's a lot a lot nicer to play during the daytime here um, under the shade. And then we have uh, extremely good lighting at night as well. Um, we're open from 7 a.m. till 11 p.m. So you can kind of get your pickleball on any time of day. Um, we have a restaurant opening up here in about two, sorry, about three or four weeks. Um, that'll be full service bar and restaurant. Um, with eventually, they're they're planning to do breakfast service as well. So that'll be again an all day, an all day thing. Um, we also have a pro shop on site, fully stocked with all the latest gear, uh, pickleball gear to you know elevate your game. Okay. So the, the, the pickleball itself, can you explain the sport? Yeah. So. Um, a lot of people think it's a new sport, but it was actually, it's been around since about 1965 was invented. Um, and then, you know, it was always kind of just a backyard game, you know, family game, that kind of thing. And uh, on, in recent years, since, since COVID, um, it really started to pick up. So, we, you know, there was a big, uh, a big involvement from the older crowds, the retired communities and stuff. They were, you know, looking for something to do outside that was active and in fun. And, uh, you know, pickleball was just, it's close quarters, it's a very social activity. So it really, they just gravitated towards that. And, um, and now there's, you know, tens of millions of people playing in the U.S. So it's really taken off over COVID. Just, you know, it's just a nice, easy to play game. It's, it's very accessible. Okay, I, I, I am looking here, I'm a novice to this sport. And, and from what I'm seeing, I can, is it fair to say it's uh, similar to table tennis? As yeah, well, tennis as yeah. Well. Some, some people actually would say, you know, it's like playing table tennis on the table. Um, it, is, it is pretty similar. If you look at table tennis, um, you know, they have tables in hotels or restaurants and all over the place. And just about anybody can pick up a paddle and play. So kind of the same thing with pickleball. Um, you know, you obviously have a larger court, but it's a very accessible sport. You know, you'll see someone 80 years old on the court with somebody who's 12 years old. So it's really cool that you can get that, that mix of generation and, and, and skill levels and everything and, and everyone still has a good time. Oh, beautiful. So when I came here this morning, I saw the, and it's my first time, I saw the covers of mm -hmm. the, the, the building. The, I'm wondering, uh, and you say that it's, uh, it's new, basically. Yep. So, what is it going to do at the, the end result of the, the building, the, the, the roofing? What, what is... So we're, yeah, we, um, we originally intended for this really to just be a shaded structure. 
Um, and, you know, opening in the rainy season has kind of given us a new, a new look on things. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's always frustrating when you get your, you know, your favorite sport rained out. So we're looking at alternatives, um, but we probably won't, won't employ anything, you know, to fully waterproof it in uh, anytime soon. But we are, we're definitely looking at that because, um, you know, it could just add to the, the list of things, which is pretty small already, list of things to do in Cayman during it rain, you know, because right now, most of the activities here that, that families like to engage in and everything tend to be outdoors. So if we could add an outdoor activity during rain, that would, I think it'd just be a, a really good addition to the, to the island, for sure. So I came here and I realized, um, as I said, I'm new to the place and I see some renovation taking place. Can you just explain what will be the end result of the development? Here? Yeah, for sure. So, um, we, so we have, we're kind of starting towards the Smith Road side. So you'll see from the Smith Road side, we have the restaurant and the pro shop, and then we have the playground. Um, we've got two banks of six courts each, so we have 12 pickleball courts, and then beyond that, we're putting three tennis courts. Um, two of those tennis courts will have pickleball lines on them, so we'll add an additional um, eight courts to our, to our 12. So probably before the end of this year, we'll have 20 courts um, and also be, you know, have tennis courts available to rent. Um, beyond the tennis courts, we'll be doing uh, cricket and baseball batting cages. So we're just trying to turn this into like just a, a hub for sports and wellness and activity. Um, you know, really try to create uh, a community around the sports, you know. Okay, so the, the, the court that we're seeing, how many courts you have present? So we have 12 right now, 12 courts. Okay, and all, can people just come in to use them or do they have to make an appointment? Yeah, so basically the, how, how our reservation system works is once you go to our website at pickleball.ky, um, in the top right on the website, you'll see a login sign up button. And once you complete the registration form, um, you'll be ready to go. You know, then you can get onto our booking system. You can you know, see the full schedule, see who's playing when, if you want to book lessons with our pro, um, if you want to join any of the events, you know, if you're, if you're already have an idea of how to play and, and, you know, basic strategy, we've got some events going on, like a open play session, which is basically you sign up for the, for the session, right now is $5 per hour per person, okay. and you'll play with whoever else signs up at the time. There's not a whole lot of organization there. It's kind of just, you know, show up and play with new people. It's a great way to, to really find new people similar to your level in pickleball that maybe, you know, maybe you break off at some point and start playing some private games with them. Um, like this morning we had, I think, 26 people show up for the open play. So that's, um, it's continually in increasing and increasing uh, as the summer closes, closes to an end. Um, and we've also got uh, a very popular club rankings night. Everyone likes to be, you know, a little bit more competitive sometimes. So those ones tend to be about 36 people um, per session. And those are Tuesdays, Thursdays at 5.30 and 7.30 p.m. And uh, we provide a, uh, we'll provide a for a group of eight or a group of nine, depending on the numbers. And uh, you'll play through with a different partner every game. And after about a two hour session, um, we'll have all the scores input to us rating and be on a website and you can compete against your friends and everything so it's nice addition to, to this. So if persons want to learn the game, do you got, do you have a, a tutorial session set up versus year two? Yeah, so uh, starting in early September we'll have some beginner clinics set up, some kind of group clinics that are, you know, they'll be in the 30, 35 dollar range per person. Um, all equipment provided and that'll be for a, a 60 to 90 minute session and, and really just you'll get the basics on how to play, um, the rules, how to score and you know some, some basic strategies just so you're not lost when you're out on the court. You know we'll, we'll be able to get people just our main goal right now is getting as many people into the sport as possible because it's just it's such a fun sport. It's so fun. So do you plan to have any league for this year? Yeah, so we're actually starting our corporate league um, September 4th. That will run from September 4th until November 18th. And um, the, the basic format of that is you have four people on a team. You can have more if you like, but only four will be playing um, at any given night. Um, you can rotate people in and out throughout the night, um, but we need a minimum of four players. And uh, that'll be one, one session of games every week 
for the for the whole period. At the end of the the league, we'll do a, an awards dinner, a big you know extravaganza night, and um, so it'll be dinners included for everybody on the for four people on the team, um, and there'll be prizes and you know trophies, uh, the whole thing. Okay, so my final question to you now is uh, if. Uh, Persons want to get in touch with you. Do you have any social media handle apart from the website? Yeah, so our Facebook page is just Pickleball Cayman. Instagram, same thing, Pickleball Cayman. Um, you can email me, Steve at pickleball.ky, or you know, just head to the website, pickleball.ky. You'll find all the details you need. Okay, so do you have any anything else to, to say to a person? No, I mean, I, I, I guess some people might be intimidated by trying a new sport, you know, especially racket sports because tennis has a a very steep learning curve and it maybe intimidates some people from trying other racket sports but I'd say you know pickleball is is so much fun and it's very easy to play like you played for the first time today you know and you got a real sweat on oh yes oh yes yes, yes. yeah I can attest to that it's a yeah. very good sport yeah right. so guys this is it from me and from Pickle Teams once more peace out <laughs>